<clears throat> Yesterday I showed you how to install Autocoder on Linux and then we also tested it on few of the benchmarks. One of the salient features of this Autocoder is that it has beaten GPT-40 and GPT-4 Turbo when it comes to Code Interpreter and few other benchmarks like Human Eval. In this video, I am going to show you how you can install this autocoder locally on your Windows system and then we will be also playing around with it. This autocoder model is fully backed by a thorough research paper which you can find it from their model card and I will drop the link in video's description. This new model is designed for code generation tasks and it is based on deep seek coder model as a base. Its test accuracy on the human eval based data sets surpasses that of GPT-4 Turbo um, and that was released in April 2024 and also it has already passed a GPT-4 O as you can see on your screen. If I just make it a bit bigger like this you will see that the first one is autocoder 33 billion and this is another thing so autocoder comes in two flavors 33 billion and 6.7 billion. 33 billion one has surpassed GPT-4 and GPT-4 O, Cloud3 Opus, CodeQuen, DeepSeek Coder which is the base model of itself and also Open Code Interpreter and few others by a wide margin. With GPT-4s yes the margin is very close but still the fact that Autocoder has surpassed them means a lot. Now the blue ones are the open source models whereas the sort of these orange ones are the closed source models. So it has beaten all of them um, in same go. So that is amazing. Now if you don't know what human eval test is, it is a framework for evaluating the ability of AI models to generate natural language that is both coherent and humane. So it primarily assess the performance of a model on tasks like on coherence, respect, empathy, factuality and inclusivity. So and I have seen that coherence of this model in the full version which we saw yesterday is quite good. Okay so that's it. Let's go to my local system on Windows and we will get it installed. This is my Windows system where I am running one GPU card of 16 GB of VRAM and my memory is 32 GB. The tool which I am going to use for this purpose is called as LM Studio. If you don't know what LM Studio is, please search my channel. I already have done heaps of videos around it. So launch LM Studio, go to its home page and then simply type autocoder and you will see that few people have done the quantized of it. On the right hand side, these are the quantized level. I have downloaded the biggest and the most um, performant quant in Q8 as you can see here. This is my file which is just over 7 gig. Let's click on these three dots and let's load the model from the middle. Let's wait for it to load and you can keep an eye on the resource usage on the top left. Model is loaded. Now on the right hand side, let's see if we could get any preset. There you go, the deep soak C coder is there. So I'm going to use its preset because as I said earlier, the base model for this is DeepSeq Coder. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's try to offload all the layers to GPU. And then let's reload the model. That should be done any second. And then we will play with this model. Let's ask it a first question. So I'm going to ask it mainly the coding questions because of course it's an autocoder. First one I'm asking it is or let me ask it to summarize this. That will be more sensible. So I'm going to ask it to summarize this factorial or Python function. There you go. So you see, very, very succinct, very concise, very perfect. Let's try out another one. In this one, I, I'm asking, sorry for, I just pressed enter. So I'm asking it to provide a brief summary of the purpose of this JavaScript. And here you go. It has correctly identified that it is an palindrome and it checks whether or not a provided string is a palindrome, which means it reads the same backward as forward. So it has not only told us the purpose of this function, but also it has told us what exactly palindrome is. Let's try to see how well it understands C++. So you see in this one, I'm asking it 
write a concise summary of this C++ snippet and then I have given it a snippet. So dot is spot on. So it's a binary search and you see that it has very, very um, compactly, concisely has print out the fun purpose of this code. Let's try to see how the code generation is. So I'm just going to give it a text prompt that generate a Python function that calculates the area of a rectangle given its length and width. There you go. This is a Python function. Amazing. Okay. Now let me ask it. Um, can you download the data set? Data sets, I think. Data sets Python library and run it for me in an example program. Okay, so it cannot download it, but because it doesn't have access to my system within this. But this is another feature which I will be covering in another video that the code interpreter feature of this model automatically downloads the um, libraries and then it runs it. So this is what makes a difference between GPT-4.0 and this one. So I will be showing you in another video as soon as I get my hands on a more powerful GPU because that model is 33 GB. I'm not sure if it is going to work with a quant or not, but I will try and let you know. Okay, so let's keep trying our, but you see that other than that, it was able to give me as how to download, uh, how to install that data set, how to use it in an example. Okay, so let's try to see if it understand Ruby language or not. So I'm going to ask it, write a Ruby script that reads an array of integers and prints the sum of all positive numbers. There you go. Amazing, amazing code you see that this is a ruby code it has written and it also gives all the comments and then it is putting the value out amazing and it says that you can replace numbers with your actual array so it is also telling us how to do it now another coding task which uh, really is very important is to translate from one language to another let's try it out in this test i am asking it translate this python function into javascript so let's see there you go i can immediately tell it is perfectly spot on you see the python function it just has written this javascript goes on and on amazing and then this is a beautiful thing that it also tells us what it did that this javascript function performs the same operation as your python function it checks whether a given number is prime or not amazing let's try out another one so now i am going other way around to convert java into python yep that is true amazing okay, that is done let's see if it can repair the code or not so i'm going to give it a python function and i'm asking it identify and fix the issue in this python function exactly so it says the above code is missing one crucial part the i loop goes up to n minus one because of the range not n itself so it needs to be adjusted how good is that just imagine you can just point this model to your uh, github repo bitbucket repo whatever uh, source code repository or version control system you are using and then you can fix your code you can translate your code you can uh, get your code explained by this model amazing okay let's see if it can fix the javascript code so in this one i am asking it find and correct the error in this javascript code let me run it yeah that's true uh, sorry because i have been using this example so i know that if it is right or not but you can see that it has very very perfectly identified the issue in it and it has also given us a true one let's try if it can fix the ruby so in this one i'm asking it identify and repair the bug in this ruby method it's an anagram exactly yep you see the problem with the above code is that it only checks if two strings are anagrams or not but does not return a boolean value yep it's and it is it has fixed it and it has told us to amazing now let me see if it can optimize a set a sql um query which is a structured query language from databases so if you see in this one i'm asking it 
given the provided suboptimal SQL query intended to retrieve customer details and their most recent orders. Optimize this query to improve efficiency, performance, and readability. So let's see if it can uh, do it or not. Oh my god, that's absolutely awesome. Yeah. So if you go up, you see it has uh, given us the optimized version of the query and just given us what it did that uses explicit join syntax. Yep. And then it has explained it further. Amazing, amazing stuff. Very impressed by this model. Um, I mean, I was already gobsmacked yesterday on Linux. Now in Windows, it has just again thrown it out of the park. So as I said, I will be covering this model more, especially it's out, uh, code interpreter features just exclusively there. So, but for this one, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what do you think. If there are any coding questions you want me to test, please put them in the comments and I will be testing them out in my subsequent videos. That's it guys. I hope that you liked it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, then please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.